As we know, we can identify three official design flows from Xilinx to support partial reconfiguration. Difference-based, also known as small bit manipulation. Module-based, PR, that is the shortened version of partial reconfiguration. The difference-based design flow is the basic brick to Xilinx partial reconfiguration. This method of partial reconfiguration is accomplished by making a small change to a design and then by generating a B-stream based on only the differences in the two designs. Switching the configuration of a specific small set of elements from one implementation to another is very quick, as the B-stream differences can be extremely smaller than the entire device B-stream. The main objective for difference-based partial reconfiguration is allow small design changes. For example, perhaps LUT programming or an I.O. standard needs to be simultaneously changed and loaded. After the changes are made, the BitGen program is used to produce a B-stream that only programs the differences between the original design and the new one. Depending on the changes, this partial B-stream can be much smaller than the original B-stream. These B-streams can be loaded quickly and easily by the software. In this figure, we can see the physical design of a given functionality on Xilinx Vertex 2 Pro FPGA. We are not interested in knowing the original functionality. What we are interested in is in showing how it will be implemented on the device. The dark background element is the area of the entire FPGA. The small light gray elements are slices and input output blocks. More in detail, the I.O. blocks are the square one at the very bottom of the figure while the rectangular ones are the slices. Well, it's not completely true in saying that only the rectangular light gray elements are slices, and this is because the gray ones are only the unused slices. The slices that have been used to implement part of the system are the dark blue elements. I can see your point. This figure is quite large, and it is not easy to see all the previously mentioned elements. But let us stay here just for a few seconds more. And the reason is quite easy. I want to see and appreciate one more thing. Can you see all the light blue lines? Can you see them crossing the entire FPGA, connecting these slices together? Can you guess what they are? <laughs> Correct. They are the interconnection resources. But at this point, Considering that we know that the connection resources within an FPGA allow the arbitrary connection of CLBs and IOBs, this means that the groups of four elements composed by light dark gray or blue rectangles are CLBs. As we can see, the majority of the area in the FPGA is used to host implement interconnection resources. And this is why the place and route phase is an extremely important phase during the design of a system. To better see all the described elements, let us just zoom in. And by doing this, we are also going to select one slice that we are going to move later. In our example, we are selecting the slice with coordinates x36 and y0. This zoom in is one CLB wide. We can see the input output blocks in the lower half of the figure, while in the upper one, we can see a CLB made of four slices one used, highlighted in red, because previously selected by us, and three not. Now, what we are interested in doing is in moving the content of the slice from this location to a new one. The way in which we can do it is quite simple. We are going to select it which, with the mouse, and we are going to drag and drop it to a different location. This figure is showing us the final results of the movement with respect to the same area we were considering before. The easiest thing to see is that now the CLB has all the four slices unused. We can also see that the majority of the interconnection are still the same, but only the majority. This means that with the decision of moving a slice from one location to another, we did not change only the content of the involved slice, but also part of the interconnection resources. This is huge and extremely important and dangerous. Difference-based reconfiguration is definitely useful and easy to be implemented, but it has to be used quite carefully and eventually to change, as we said, only LUT or IO blocks content. Even though it is possible to change routing information, it is not recommended due to the possibility of internal contention during reconfiguration. 
So, how to deal with bigger modifications, but still partial ones with respect to the entire design? That is exactly what the module-based and later on the partial reconfiguration flows have been designed for.